But first, with England's bowlers returning to training, the chance of getting some test cricket this summer have improved. Now, hopefully, first up for England will be West Indies. Then later in the summer, it could, again, all things going well, be Pakistan. Now, their CEO is Wazim Khan. He joins us live from Lahore. Great to have you along, Wazim. How are you? And what chances do you think we've got of your lads coming over and playing some competitive cricket? Yeah, thanks, Wardy. Great, great to be on the on the show. Um, the ECB presented to us about uh, a week or so ago just on the provisions they're putting in place. We had uh, the relevant people from our side, Misbah al Haq, the head coach, um, and also our doctor was on there as well. Um, and look, we were really pleased with everything we heard uh, in terms of all the provisions the ECB are putting in place. So uh, the players are chomping at the bits. So we're having to sort of keep them back a little bit, um, but. Uh, as things stands at the moment, um, we're, we're very much looking forward to touring. What are the major obstacles then, would you say? I mean, it's a huge logistical challenge. So first West Indies, I imagine you want to see how that goes and then for you. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a difficult one because when the West Indies are sort of here, we're, gonna, we're not going to be following too far behind them because we need a, sort of a 14-day quarantine period when we get to England and then obviously enough time to practice for the guys as well so they can be ready. Um, so that's going to be something that's a bit of a challenge, um, an extended squad. So we're looking at bringing around about 25 players, uh, which is more than normal because we've got a T20 series at the end of the, the test matches. So it's more manageable to bring everyone together. And before that, obviously, is getting the guys training and getting them together and trying to find um, a solution really to, to bring them together and, and get them ready for the, for the tour. And we're certainly planning that at the moment. And we're, we're probably about a week away from that. Your plan is to put them into some sort of quarantine over there in a training camp, is that right? So just doing the maths in terms of how long that might be, if they go into that quarantine at the stadium and then they go to the UK and are quarantined there, that could be three months that they're in quarantine for or in a biosecure environment at least. Yeah, well, the, the plan is to try and bring them together um, at our National Cricket Academy here in Lahore um, so that we can start to get them prepared. Um, there's a, a, a program that's been developed by our medical um, sort of team in consultation with the ICC in terms of a sort of return to pray, uh, training program for them. Um, but we are looking at whether we can bring the families as well so that we can get everybody tested so that they can spend some time with their families because three months just cooped up is, is going to be uh, pretty tough for, for the guys. And it's something that's been raised. Um, that in itself would be quite a logistical challenge for us to have everybody, family and kids in, in the National Academy uh, during that period of time. So, you know, lots for us to ponder and, you know, certainly a massive challenge for us ahead. Hi, Waz. I wanted to ask about cost, actually. One of the issues that was put to Johnny Grave uh, of West Indies was about the extra cost, you know, chartering a plane, getting his players together, and they're going to try and load that cost onto ECB. Clearly, from what you're saying, all the logistical side of it, from your perspective, is going to add some cost as well. Deep cleaning uh, the stadium or the, the, uh, the accommodation area at your camp, if you're going to bring families, 25 players. Are you looking to offload any cost above and beyond what would normally be the case onto ECB as well? Well, to, to be fair to the math is that they've actually raised that themselves about looking at um, what things they can put on and how they can support us with the additional uh, numbers that are going to come on tour and the chartered flight, etc. cetera. So um, there's something that we're going to have to discuss more, deep, um, more deeply with them over the next week or so. But certainly from our perspective, um, we're probably, you know, in a similar situation to the West Indies where, you know, it's, it's tough for all of us at the moment. And bringing the additional numbers, um, chartered flights, all of those things is going gonna, is gonna to clearly cost quite a bit of money. But I think we, we're also willing to make some investment from our side because getting the guys, you know, getting a, a sort of biosecure training camps and, you know, all the things that we have to do, that's our investment. And we should be doing that anyway over here in Pakistan. But certainly in terms of once, once we're, we're getting close to touring England, um, we hopefully have all of those things in place and we're very clear about, you know, who's picking up the costs. Wazim, Ebbs here. Um, I just wanted to get a Ebbs. feel for what the players say, because at the end of the day, it's that they're the heartbeat of it. Has there been any sort of name to these plans? Have they sort of said their concerns about being locked down for so long? What, what's the players saying? 
Yeah, there, there's obviously some reservations from the MEBS because, you know, three months when the reality kicks in and you start to really think that through. Uh, firstly, you sort of, uh, many of them are based in Lahore, so, you know, they might be a few miles away from their families, but not able to see them for a month and then having to kind of disappear for two months after that. Um, at the moment, the players are open. Um, you know, they, they, I think they trust us that we're going to do what's right by them. Um, and we'll certainly do that. And we certainly will not be jeopardizing their health or their well-being um, for the sake of cricket. We all want cricket to be played, but not at all costs. And, you know, we, we're, our medical team are talking to the ECB medical team very closely on a weekly basis. So we can understand how the situation's changing. And in the end, we're also going to need government clearance as well uh, from both sides um, to make sure before we can actually plan. But the, the players are pretty much putting it in our hands and saying, look, you know, we trust you. Uh, and we'll keep them informed on a regular basis. Understanding, Wazim, that you talked about the two-week quarantine period when you get to the UK. Is your understanding we'll be able to, to practice during that quarantine period, or is that quarantine period an, an essential kind of lockdown for each individual, i.e., add a bit of extra time that you'll require, because if you can't in that period, you're going to clearly require a bit more time to get and press series. Yeah, I mean, we've the ECB said they're going to come back to us on that um, once they gain clarity. Um, and I think they're, they're checking with, with the government in terms of what, what we are able to do during that time. But the way we're planning, Athers, is, is to try and get to England early July so that um, we can get the quarantine period done. Um, if they can practice during that time, great. If not, uh, then at least we get the 14 days done and it gives us sort of two and a half weeks um, or just under three weeks before the first test match to give the guys time to practice. Um, we've been told there's going to be two venues. Uh, we've not been told which the two venues are. Uh, we're also going to get a third venue, which is going to be our base purely for us to use during the time that we're in England. Uh, I would suspect with a hotel accommodation um, nearby or on the ground. Um, and so all those things will be put in place. There'll obviously be no matches against county teams. So the 25 players we'll have will give us the opportunity to play sort of the intra matches, which uh, our head coach will probably want to do and get the guys prepared before the first test. Whilst why do this and what benefit is it to Pakistan cricket? You mentioned the extra cost that you're going to be incurring getting the guys into biosecure venues before they potentially do fly to the UK. Is this a little bit about leverage and potentially getting England to tour in 2022? Look, I mean, I mean, Tom, Tom Harrison came over to Pakistan in September uh, with one of the board directors. And, you know, we made a decision then that it was going to be a series of small steps that needed to be taken. There's a lot of cricket to be played between now and 2022. Um, I've had that question raised a few times, Wardy, that, you know, has it been a deal cut or is, is something going to happen? And I said, look, simple fact is, and it's a genuine answer, is that, um, you know, we need to get cricket back on again. Um, and now is probably not the time to try and leverage anything. I think naturally things will take their course over the next two years. As I say, we've got a lot of home series between now and then, which hopefully will all go successfully, um, we run successfully. And, um, you know, we'll give more confidence to the likes of Australia and England who are due to tour in 2022. But this is really about getting cricket back on again. Um, the cricketers want to play. And I think it's important for the global game as well that we actually start to bring a level of normalcy, normalcy back to, to playing cricket again, whatever that might look like um, over the next six to 12 months. We'll, we'll broaden it out, Waz, in the next part. Just a, a brief question on what life is, is like at the moment in Lahore. You're in the middle of Ramadan. You're looking well on it. I mean, are you in full lockdown? I know it's a country where a lot of people are below the poverty line. And the Prime Minister yeah. has talked about the difficulty of imposing full lockdown, whereby the cure would be worse than the disease, as it were. What is life like in Lahore for you at the moment? Yeah, we, we've sort of our offices have been closed now for about seven weeks, eight weeks. Um, there was a sort of a full lockdown and then now it's, it's been moved to a partial lockdown. And as you say, Af, it's, it's a real dilemma for the prime minister because, you know, we've got a, you know, 30 percent of the population, 220 million people here live under the poverty line. And a lot of those guys are daily workers who get daily wages for going out and working, um, putting bread on the table for the families and it's a serious issue. So, you know, people have sat in both camps. It's been very, very challenging, I think, for Imran to, 
to try and work out what is the best thing to do. And I think he's taken more of a, a humanitarian viewpoint that actually people um, going hungry is going to be far worse for the country. Uh, and then what they're trying to do is obviously put measures in place that if you are going out, then uh, there's certain restrictions and shops are open between 10 and 5 every day during Ramadan um, and closed at other times. But sometimes you just never get a quite a real understanding about what the situation is like here because there's a huge population out there in the, in the outskirts, in the villages. So there's been about 20,000, I think, reported cases and just over 1,000 deaths um, from the virus, which is, um, you know, on the face of it, which is great news. But you, you never quite know what the real situation is and the reality of it is. And I guess th th because there is such a high level of uh, uh, illiteracy rate in Pakistan, uh, you know, I still hear people talking about the fact that it's not a serious disease and it's not a serious issue and, you know, it's not as bad as you think. So when you do go out for drives, you see people still congregating in groups. Um, the more educated you are, the more people get to comprehend and understand. And that's been my kind of realization here. And, uh, and that's the worry, really, is that, you know, people carry on normal. Um, you know, it could get far worse before it gets any better here.